Welcome back guys. I am here with another Loki video and man, it was quite the thing. Okay. Uh, the episode five was pretty crazy. Episode four was pretty crazy. Overall, Loki in general uh, has just been a treat. Uh, it's the best thing I've seen Marvel put out in quite some time. And keep in mind, we haven't had, you know, movies in a while, but um you know with this whole disney plus tv series thing i think it's gone very well um you know I, I i'm really impressed with what they've been able to do uh with loki um what they've been able to do with mobius i mean just introducing the tva um potentially we're gonna get kang the conqueror or even dr doom i will get into that later in this video but it is beyond the void we have the void okay everybody's talking about you know what the hell is this area of the world where do you go once you get pruned loki gets pruned we see mobius get pruned and of course in this episode we actually see sylvie played by sophie d martino she actually ends up pruning herself setting her to the void now that's where you find out at the end of last episode, we found out that everybody that gets pruned goes to the void. At least we didn't know what it was called, and now we do know that it's called the void. So we saw all sorts of Loki variants, four of them exactly, who basically, Loki asked, am I dead? Said, no, but you will be if you don't come with us. We had this take place right after that. We have those variants. The variants are very interesting. We find all sorts of backstory um very interesting backstory about robert e grant's older loki i'm honestly wondering if that is the loki from the timeline that we see in the mcu when we see in the movies he mentions something very interesting on top of that you get kid loki say that basically his nexus event was that he killed thor which is incredible you know crazy right um, but on top of that, we also have the older Loki that straight up says uh, that he faked out the Mad Titan. He created an image and faked out the Mad Titan. And it honestly is very similar to what people were suggesting that Loki didn't die in Infinity War. He actually lived because he faked himself and he was never actually killed by the Mad Titan Thanos. Well, that uh, Robert E. Grant character basically was living that life. And he just basically, he survived, but he, of course, was just floating all throughout space. He told his backstory going to a planet, wanting to catch up with uh, Thor, and then the TVA found him and pruned him, and he was on this planet. We get all sorts of Easter eggs in this. Uh, we get the, you know, President Loki from the trailer that we've seen so many times kind of a letdown with president loki wasn't a huge deal uh probably lasted about five to seven minutes screen time if even uh still kind of cool throwing him out there uh we get uh frog thor um so that was uh that was funny uh he's in like a jar of some sort but you can see him uh we get the thanos copter um from the comics which i thought was cool but I wanted to talk extensively about, you know, episode five and, and what it brings, um, you know, moving on because there was no post credits or mid credit scene and that came as a shock to some people. Now, I look at this and I think, you know, we're heading into episode six. What were they going to do going into episode six? How, how are they going to make this connect to the finale? And so we get Mobius. We finally get that scene that was leaked. Turns out it wasn't episode four that was leaked. It was episode five. And it's the scene with the Sphinx in the background. It's Mobius driving that uh, pizza car. And of course, he ended up picking up Sylvie. But Sylvie needs to do something before she prunes herself and gets there, right? She actually talks to Ravona Renslayer. And Renslayer, she's trying to get all the information out of her. Renslayer's playing dumb, and you can really tell. She tries to trick the audience, but it really never worked on me. Maybe it worked on some people, 
We even get to see Miss Minutes again, who seems I've always felt like was behind everything and was honestly Kang the whole time in a weird way. Um, we find out that she's just buying herself time for the TVA goons to show up. She wasn't going to tell Sylvie anything. It was all fake. So Sylvie just ends up pruning herself and getting out of there. And it's really interesting because it really tricks your brain. Does Ravona even know who's behind this? What's going on? Maybe whoever's behind this is she's trying to take down so she can make Kang, who is her lover in the comics, uh, the, the head. But either way, it's really kind of weird. And we get Sylvie, who comes down into the void. Of course, she gets picked up by Mobius, saved by Mobius. So, you know, we're, we're all over the place because we have that going on. We have the dynamic with Loki following the other Loki variants. They get ambushed by President Loki and his goon squad. They're able to get out of that, and then eventually they meet up together. Well, here's the crazy thing is that Mobius is alive, and Loki didn't even know that, so that happens. On top of that, before Sylvie left the TVA headquarters, she sold the Tempad. So she's able to actually give that to Mobius and allow him to transport back to the TVA. He says he wants to burn it to the ground. And here is when it really gets interesting. Because we get, you know, this fight between Aloth and, you know, Loki, who's trying to distract Aloth. And then, of course, you get the older Loki, who creates this, like, fake Asgard, which is really impressive, shows off how much power he has. And it's all to buy Sylvie time to use her enchanting powers on Aleth. And she's able to do it. And the thing that's interesting, so we do lose older Loki's character, which is a bummer. But it's all for the, it's all to save time so they can actually take down Aleth. And they do with the enchanting and we get to the end of this uh, episode, and essentially what ends up happening is we get this, this portal, it seems like, right? It opens up, and it's really interesting because we don't really know who's behind the curtain. We don't know who's running the whole thing. We have some ideas, but we really just don't know. And at the end of the day, it looks like this portal is showing a... A mirror image of, and I could be wrong, but in the comics, it looks very similar. I'm already seeing it all over the web. It looks like it's Doctor Doom's Castle Doom. The end of this episode ends with either Castle Doom being the place of origin for all of this, and Doctor Doom, who is rumored to be cast... Uh, as the great actor Michael Fassbender, who played Magneto in the X-Men series. But also, it could be Kang the Conqueror, who's either in Castle Doom, or maybe it's Castle uh, Limbo. Or maybe, since there's one scene that I can recall that we haven't seen yet, Loki... King Loki with his gold armor. We have not seen that scene yet. So maybe it's it's King Loki. The true evil Loki variant, which we haven't seen yet. I don't know who it is. Is it Doctor Doom? Is it King Loki? Is it Kang? Is it a combination of the three? Is it a combination of two of those three? I don't know. But... My thoughts, my takeaways, episode five, enjoyed it. It was fun. Episode six should wrap things up, at least at this moment. Will we see this Loki in Thor 4? Will we see this Loki in Multiverse of Madness? I just don't know. And while they said that it sounds to me like Loki is going to be staying out of those movies for now, I'm not 100% convinced he is. But why would they tell you he is? Or why would they tell you he isn't? Either way, they've done a phenomenal job. And we're almost done with the series. And I'm going to miss the hell out of the series. Even though it was only six episodes, I'm going to miss the hell out of the series. Because they've done such a great job. 
They've taken so many risks. They've done things that we've simply never seen in the MCU before. So that is, uh, that's going to do it for this video. Um, let me know in the comments, is it Dr. Doom? Is it King Loki? Or is it Kang the Conqueror? Let me know below. We're either going to get Jonathan Majors, Tom Hiddleston, or Michael Fassbender, in my opinion. I tend to lean towards Kang the Conqueror uh, just residing at Castle Doom, or it's just Castle Limbo, and he's there. Um, but if it is Castle Doom, and we do get Michael Fassbender before we get the Fantastic Four, that would sure make for a bang of an intro into the Fantastic Four. Um, but that's going to do it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. You can go over to the uh, my origin of where I, I write all my articles for the MCU. You can go over to Nightcast Media. Follow them at Nightcast Media on Twitter. At NightcastMedia.com is where you can find the articles. But that's going to do it for me. And you guys take care.